Well, uh, we got the pig nut hickory. We don't get many of those uh, to, to mill up, but uh, I got this log, which has a crotch section on that end, which we're cutting 90 degrees to the crotch section. It was, I just decided to do that. There was better features uh, cutting it the other way. But it is so nice out here. It's like a, uh, a cool breeze, you can see it. And it's like in the low 70s. It's just one of them days, it's a Sunday, where I just want to go get in my hunting shack and lay down and take a nice long nap. It is so nice outside right now. But I got to get this log cut up and get it off the mill because I have other projects that need to be done. This is my own personal project. We actually have work and milling to do on Monday. So it needs to be cut up and got off the mill. So we are going to use the blades that Jerry's ReSharp sent me. Um, I have one on there now, but I've cut quite a few logs with it. I'm very happy with it. And I during the uh, video, I'll go over there and get you the information uh, on what blades we're using because they they're working really good. I'm really happy with them. Um, so I do thank Jerry's ReSharp for sending them to me to try. I think I'm going to I'm going to really love using them. And uh, big shout out to them for reaching out to me and making me the offer to try them. Now, I believe that possibly he may not carry them yet. He asked me to try them. He wants to carry them. Or thinking about carrying me wanted my opinion so don't hold me to it but if you go to him based on my recommendations mention it to them and see if the, I mean obviously he can get them tell them you want to try them as well and I'm sure he'd be glad to sell you some uh, being that's what he's thinking about carrying so and then you can test them out and you can leave your testimony as well so I'm going to get on this, but I need to change the blade real quick on here. And I need to take the baby tractor over and get the big tractor. And uh, so we'll be back in just a minute and uh, we'll get started on cutting this. I don't know if you guys know a whole lot about pig nut um, hickory, if you've seen much of it ever cut up. But it is absolutely beautiful lumber. And you're about to find out how beautiful it is as we cut it up because I'm going to show you. All right, I did take a piece off, another cut off of it real quick. I figure I'll give you a look. Hopefully you'll watch to the end. You got the surprise up early, but I'm in a uh, slow-mo casual mood. So not wanting to be super spontaneous. So I figured I'd give you a peek for those that just needed to know right away and wanted to see what was gonna come out of the log for those of you uh that want to follow along and watch me cut it up well i appreciate you so i'm gonna go ahead and put it i'm gonna roll the log and then i'm gonna go ahead and put it on a time lapse and we'll go ahead and get it cut and then i'll spread some boards out so you can see how pretty it's going to be uh when it's all said and done i'm not sure how many of you guys have cut any of this stuff uh it's tough it's hickory got to take it nice and slow but it's absolutely beautiful uh, lumber. I like being out at the mill sometimes, but sometimes I just do it nice and casually. Just come out, it's nice out here, nice and sunny, not in a big hurry or anything like that. I figured I'd bring you along with me while I cut it up and drop the chain three or four times. Like I said, there we go. This is how it's going to go today. <laughs> oh, you know what? I'm being, I'm being lazy and it's costing me. Because I'm not, uh, just not in a hurry. There we go. Now we'll get that back hooked up. Alright. Now we're finally ready. Oh, I gotta get the brace off, but I gotta let it roll that way a little bit in order to put the uh, bunks back up so I can turn it over. 
or it's just going to fold them over and end up on the ground. I don't want to do that. Not today. We're not going to do that. It should roll back this way a little bit. Yep. Get that out of there. Come on. Let me have it. There we go. Now we should be set up for where we can put the stops up. They got to be all the way up, 90 degrees. If they're not 90 degrees, the uh, as the log rolls, it'll just fold them over. There we go. Now we're going to get into the crotch section up here, uh, and hopefully the blade is still sharp enough to get through it. I don't have any uh, up and downs. here so before I get situated let me move it out of the way and get this down some or I won't be able to uh, get it down once I get started on it all right everything's down I can make some more bro uh, branch spurs I call them out of that curve piece right there Shane wants to get hooked on everything today. Shane. Oh. Now, we got a nice branch section here, so that's going to give me, like, inside, it's going to be like an oval. That's part of the reason I turned the log the way I did. So, right here is where the crotch was. And I turned it 90 degrees to the crotch. A lot of you like, oh man, you're missing out on the crotch wood. I'll still get some of it, but I saw more options the other way as far as like a knot there. And then we're gonna we're gonna be going sideways into the crotch. So by doing that, it also is a stronger uh, joint or spot in the wood going this way versus cutting 90 degrees to the crotch. There'll still be some designer wood in there. It'll have a nice look, but it won't be as unstable. And this, this log's about 12 feet long, so there's plenty of wood here. Now I'm just going to take some little pieces off the end here. We'll see how well the blade does starting on an angle. <laughs> change the blade out after I um, got some of this top off of here before I put the new blade on but well it just didn't work out that's why I wanted to test that I don't know you probably couldn't see it in the camera but it started dipping and it's dull so if 
I try to take a cut across there like that, I'm going to have up and down. I'm going to end up having to take another cut to straighten it out. I don't want to waste the wood and ruin it. So I'm going to go ahead and put a new blade on there. Um, I cut quite a bit with that blade, so I'm not upset about it. It's, I got more, I think, out of that blade than I did the Wood Miser uh, Turbo 7 Double Hards. I mean, that's my opinion. You know, you, every log's a little different. But you learn after a while, you get a general idea of how much you can cut. Now, what is that doing? That normally goes in pretty easy. There we go. Usually I just use that little piece of wood to tap it, but... So, everything's sticking. Well, that's the problem. When you use uh, when you use water to mill, everything gets a little rusty, and uh, makes it a little harder to do stuff with. But I gotta take that one off first. Before I take that one off. Now I know on some of the like the woodland mills and a couple of the other ones. I've been looking at a lot of different mills, huts and stuff like that. You don't have this pole in the way, um, which is nice. This one's really rusted. I got to get some grease on it. But I got a pair of pliers right here. So um, you don't have to contend with this pole right here in the way. And on the new mills, it's not there neither. So yeah. How many times I said I'm going to put oil in this and have it? So I'm going to uh, I'm going to definitely do it right now after we get this blade off of here. It's got these little teeny pieces that are bent down. The blade catches on, uh, and it's just, it's just hardly enough room get the blades out past the tire. So like I said, this is an older mill. The new ones, the new ones you don't have that issue with. So I'll go stack this up. It's a shame because the blade actually still feels pretty sharp, but we are cutting hickory. And hickory is a beast of its own. It's like cutting locusts. I got blades everywhere. I'm tripping over them. Okay, before I open that up and put that on there, you see how well my memory is? Because I just read this to you the other day when we did another one. This is Timber Dog. So that's the, uh, the item, that's the name of the uh, blade. And they are, of course, 158 inches. That's just the length for this blade, for this mill. Inch and a quarter wide this way. And they are 0.042 as far as thickness goes. And they are 7 degree platinums. So that is a, uh, so far, I have been uh, super, super happy uh, with these blades. So this is the second one. And I probably cut up a good 10, 10 logs, you know, the big oak. Uh, a couple locusts, a maple, part of this one, um, a poplar log. I mean, I've I have cut a lot more with this blade than I have with the Turbo Sevens, and part of a hard hickory. So uh, I'd say that that uh, those blades are good quality. Um, at this point, I'm definitely not going to probably go back to the uh, the. Uh, Woodmeister blades simply because for my money I can get a lot more cuts out of a blade and uh, well that equals profit right so let me I gotta cut this band off of here open it up I got me a set of snips right here Make sure I hold on to it tight because I don't want it opening up in my hand. That would uh, 
That wouldn't be too good. These are nice and sharp, that's for sure. Put them over here in the ground. And let them open up. Woo! I need to watch my fingers on this blade. Nice and sharp. Or I'm going to have some holes in my fingers. They are sweet. As I say, it's a little difficult getting it in there on this side here, the way this mill is. There's not really enough room for it to fit past that bar, and I don't want to ding up the blades. So, you got to be a little bit of a Houdini to get these blades on. If I have that wants to go over this one, then it wants to immediately bend under the stop on that side, and the whole blade gets in there crooked. So you just gotta, you just gotta have a little bit of patience. Come over here and work the tire down, get up and over. What happens when you push on here? It wants to push this out here. So that's what it just did. So you just gotta reach across. Get it where it belongs. Top went over a little bit. That's why I always get it about where I want it. I tighten it up and then I test it. And we'll just snug it up and then you run it for a little bit. And uh, then you'll probably have to snug it up again. Now when you put a new blade on it now, you can't go full hog on it. You got that blade's gonna stretch the heat up. So take your first couple cuts. You know, be kind of easy on it. Um, let the blade do its little bit of stretching, heating up, and you'll probably have to adjust it again. The tension on it. Hopefully this one tightens up. Well, it seems like it might be a little long. Getting awful far on the adjustments. Oh, no. I had to go in quite a ways on that one to uh, get it to tighten up. That's. I know it's 158 inches. Let me just look at. I like to inspect these every so often. After this log, I need to go ahead and grease them. I just replaced these idlers not too long ago. Okay. Then I come back and double check and make sure nothing weird's going on. Because this stuff can kick up. <laughs> well, the GoPro decided it was going to take a nap without me. Apparently I, I had the GoPro set on a certain time for it's supposed to time out. And I didn't uh, check it. So, you always, when you put new batteries in these things and they go dead, you got to go back and check all the uh, options to make sure that it hasn't reset itself to factory. But I don't always remember to do that. So, let's start cutting. <laughs>
peek. Take a peek at these two, ball, these two boards. You're going to be amazed at how pretty this lumber is. Now I will tell you that this lumber is at its probably prettiest right now. It is uh, it's gorgeous, but I'm going to tell you this wood is hard to uh, dry a sticker. So um, you really have to, to take your time stickering it really good. Uh, or you're going to have problems with it. It's hickory, but particularly this hickory, for some reason I've done it before, is it just likes to uh, split and check a lot. Now, I'm going to show you why I chose to cut it the way I did, Look at it, all the features on the wood. Now look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So I knew that big knot section was there, and I wanted to capture that in the face of my wood. I mean, just look at that. So, you can see it had some worms in it um, and defects. This tree actually, part of the reason this is kind of split right here is the guy told me this tree kind of fell over but it kind of ripped it. So it's really bendable and stretchy, almost like a gum. And he said there was a big, like a defect in it and right where that defect was, the tree just kind of rolled itself over and, and ripped over. So they had to cut all that out. So what happened was, there was some tear out and a little bit of damage on this end. If it wasn't for the fact that this knot was so close, I would have cut it back further. Um, we'll let it dry, because that could always be glued. I really wanted to get this knot feature in the lumber. So... As we cut down, really didn't see a whole lot of figure as far as the crotch section because I'm actually below it now. So, I really honestly believe that cutting it this way, I was going to get the most faced grain, the most, the best face uh, finish as far as the look goes. If I had cut it the other way, something just told me that I wasn't going to get as nice of a face on the wood. So everybody's different the way they cut stuff and the way they view a log um like you know i cut a lot of stuff with live edge and stuff like that and i'm really looking for those features in the wood because i'm not making dimensional lumber to build with this will be this could be siding this could be interior siding or you know wall boards this could be you know um little table settings i mean it could be a lot of stuff it's not really thick enough for that at this point but i'm getting ready to make thicker boards now i just like to take a couple boards off um and just to have some pretty boards like that that would make a beautiful if you were to make a headboard and to say you were to use some larger beams and you needed an inset you know glue these together could you imagine that with uh say this was a headboard an inset on a headboard and you had a maple you know exterior and top in large you know a center piece is a bit in fact thicker a bottom piece and this was like a panel built into it could you imagine how pretty that would be it would be absolutely drop dead gorgeous so that's kind of why i do some of the logs these ways uh for panels for projects um you know i still got two more logs i got them listed on facebook for sale that's kind of like they're just sitting there if i could make some quick bucks off of them and sell them as a log i will if they sit there and i get time they'll come to our mill and be stickered and up for drying and then i'll sell them i'll get more money for them that way but i'm going to put you on time lapse we're going to go ahead and knock this one out here i'll get them kind of laid out and you take a really good look at how nice this uh, log came out <music> Okay, I ended up basically getting eight quarters out of each board. Unfortunately, the way it all worked out and what I had left the pith 
in the middle of one board, but I don't see a lot of reaction. Time will tell, but there's that split. So I've got to get a plate and put a plate across these or that stuff will end up taking off uh, halfway up the board, being it's hickory. Now I want to show you guys something for you uh, new sawyers out there. If I can get around with this stand here. Uh, I got you on a stand, not the magnet. So it's a tripod. So something that I don't see a lot of people explain, and some of you guys may be new, and maybe while you're watching the mill, the uh, video. On your mill, you're gonna have two scales, and I know mine are dirty. You're gonna have three. You're gonna have your four quarter, your five quarter, your six quarter, and your eight quarter. So as you can see, if you were to think, oh, I want to cut it every two inches. Well, if I start off at 12, I'm not going to end up with a two inch board at the end because these scales, they allow for the kerf on the blade. So when you're measuring your logs and you you decide what you want to get out of it, you got to go by this scale. Because like I said, if you, if you said, well, I want to get, um, three, you know, two inch, uh, boards, then, uh, or, uh, four, then you're going to be too, uh, too small when you get to the end one. So you got to go by this scale right here. So I decided that I wanted eight quarter boards. I could have done four quarter, but I decided for the last remaining part, since it was the widest part of the log that I wanted to go ahead and go with eight quarters. So I used the, um, quarter scale to do that now they got an eight quarter on here um, if you want to do every eight quarters but that still works out just fine they may be a, a hair smaller but I didn't have that so when I cut the uh, excess off the, the the sapwood off I had to go by this this scale right here so um, it worked out just fine uh, this would be the area where the crotch would have been and there's not really a lot to it. You can't really see the heart coming through here. Um, right here you can start to see it. But it definitely is in that board. Um, but you see how it's all, this ring is split. This is like I said, where the tree had folded over. And it just, it pulled a lot of stuff out of here. There was a lot of tension here. So this split right around a growth line. You can see. So I'll put a board, I'll put a big clamp on it, clamp it together. I'll take me one of those metal strips and uh, it won't make this heel of course but it'll keep it from continuing and when it dries um, either you can cut some of this off or you can glue it or whichever you decide uh, but the final product will be done by the carpenter which is me most of the time or whoever I sell it to but it's definitely unique as far as the look goes isn't it it almost has like a cherry color, but with, you know, your black streaks and all. Some of the cherry has, but it's definitely got the hickory look. Hickory is really dark like that and has all these little black ingrains in it. So, and this one's just got sawdust. It dries pretty quick. That's just, that was just after I cut it, it already dried. But, you know, when you finish it, it's going to look like that. So, yeah, that's one, one of three logs that uh man everything everything tends to move around a little bit on these cameras there we go so you got my beautiful face in there <laughs> uh not so much but this is a beautiful pig nut hickory and uh like i said i have two more logs that are about nine nine and eight nine and eight nine foot eight inches nine foot ten inches i had to clean the ends up and i didn't remeasure them the biggest part is I wanted to make sure I had eight footers. So that leaves me a little room if it checks or whatever. I can cut that off and have nice boards. So this is a nice little Sunday evening project for me. So now either go home, take a nap, and then go hunting later. Or just take a nap and hope I actually wake up today. Because <laughs> sometimes when I take naps, I wake up tomorrow. Which is actually a good thing, because I don't get the sleep I need. So, I need all the rest my body will let me have. 
But thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys. Please like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. My name is Chris Shea, the wood guy, and my slogan is let's play with wood. So that's what I do every day. I appreciate you. Thanks for watching and joining in.